Let's go through some non-alternative hypothesis setup. Um, one thing to note is the null hypothesis will always have an equal sign in it that allows us to fix a specific distribution. Uh, the alternative will always have either a less than, a greater than, or a not equal sign to it. Another hint, whatever number appears in the null hypothesis, that same number will appear here in the alternative. So let's take a look at some specific examples. Newsletter believes that more than 75, 74% of their researchers own a personal computer. Um, so this here, this alpha significance level, it doesn't um, factor in directly to this. That'll come later in the null hypothesis test. Really the only important number there is the 74. So this we would have P equals, and I'm gonna convert that to a decimal. So right away, we also know that this is going to be a P. We know that there's going to be a 0.74. Uh, the only question is, do we have a less than, a greater than, or a not equal to? And here it says the, the publisher believes that more than. So if we indeed reject this null hypothesis, we'll settle on this claim. It's important to know that the alternative is really what we're expecting to find when we conduct most studies, um, at, at least in terms of scientific research or, or some kind of, um, I, I guess I shouldn't say that. It, there could be situations in factories where you assume that the null hypothesis is mostly gonna be true unless something uh, really out of the ordinary is happening. In, in scientific research, uh, this is what the researchers believe is probably true, or they wouldn't be conducting the study in the first place. I'm going to submit that. Go to next. Uh, again, we know that there's going to be an equal sign. Um, this is the key bit of information. Uh, and we're talking about a proportion here, not a mean. Uh, it's important to note, too, notice there is a P here with a hat on it and I'm putting the P without that, what's the difference? Well, this is the population proportion. It's a parameter. This is the sample proportion. It's a statistic. Uh, the reason I'm using this, the null and alternative hypothesis are always talking about the parameters, about the things going on in the population. That's, that's the big reason we're conducting the test here. That's why I'm using the, the P instead of the P hat. Uh, and here, what the alternative would be is less than 0.48. Again, remember that these numbers should always match up. The only difference will be that this will be a less than, a greater than, or a not equal to. Okay, this is similar. Let's skip ahead. This one's a little different. Uh, would I like to know if that goes correctly at the 450 frame setting? Bags are overfilled. Um, so here we do have an average, uh, so we need our population mean, which would be right here. And the mean equals 415 grams. I uh, can't remember if Hawks, I think they're looking just for the number here instead of the unit also, but the unit would be at part of the null hypothesis. Uh, is this sufficient level that the bags are overfilled? Uh, so the alternative here would be that our mean is actually greater than 415. Let's submit those. Okay. Um, let's see. Regulate. Okay, so here, uh, again, we have a, a mean. Um, let me go ahead and put that in there. And as with always, the null hypothesis should be an equals. The question here is, do we put the 7.5 or the 7.7? .7? So here's where we have to look closely at what the actual claim or what are we actually testing. Here's the research question. Is there sufficient evidence? This is our alpha level of significance, so it's not playing in uh, here yet. But here, that the valve does not perform to the specifications. 
So the specifications is what we're looking at. Which of these two is the specifications? Well, this is coming from the sample. This is the sample mean. Uh, later, we'll see that's labeled as X bar or X with a bar over it. This one right here is the specifications. It's what the design, what the valve was designed to produce. So that's what we want to use in our null. Um, the alternative then again has to use that mean, and it has to have the 7.7. Uh, what we need to figure out is what what's the next symbol. I'm going to put 7.7 there also. We're just trying to figure out what symbol goes in here. Sufficient evidence that the valve does not perform to the specifications. Um, so in this case, honestly, it's, it's a little tricky. Um, I think this would be a valid answer, less than, because it's it's performing even worse than the specifications. Um, but because they don't say the valve performs less than, uh, we should probably go with performs differently than. Uh, in other words, we would reject the null even if it's above the specification. So even if it's something like 7.9 or 8 pounds per square inch, we would reject this particular null. Um, if you had put less than in that case and gotten it wrong, that's one where I would give you credit if you came back, because I think there's a good argument and it's not clearly worded exactly what they're looking for there. Okay, these are similar. Let me let me do one more here. Okay, and here notice this is the wording that they'd be looking for for the less than. So instead of instead of the way they worded the last question where they they said it could be below or it could be above, uh, this one's strictly below. So again, we have 240 engines, mean pressure five pounds per square inch. So right away, we know that we have a mean, always an equal sign in the null hypothesis. The question is the 5 or 5.1, and we're looking at the specifications. So this is that 5.1, and this is going to have to be mean something 5.1. Here, this word below tips us off that it is a less than. So this one's worded more clearly than uh, the last question. This one, you really don't have a choice. This needs to be less than. Okay, and I think that gives some basic examples. Feel free to write if you have further questions, especially on specific ones that they 